ordinary people, extraordinary God. Part two, or conclusion, if you will. Come on up. Or as we say, as we say, come on down. You know when they have these game shows, they say, come on down, <laughs> right? Okay. We've met Stephen and we've met Philip. Ordinary people uh, who started out serving the church. Uh, and they, they, the apostles said they need to be full of the, full of wisdom. They have to have good reputation. And honestly, um, especially in the beginning, but even now, uh, the people of God should have, we should have a good reputation outside of the church. We should have a good reputation in the church and outside of the church. And so they were supposed to have a good reputation. And then the apostles also said they have to have wisdom because they're going to have to make tough decisions and they have to be full of the spirit. So we've talked about that already. That That is a... a uh, a reminder to each one of us as well to do the work of God, to do any of the work of God, however mundane, however simple, not necessarily from the pulpit, but in any part, we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God among many other things, but the Holy Spirit is God's empowering, empowering for service. Now, the Holy Spirit does many other things. If you're a Christian this morning, you did not get saved without the help of the Holy Spirit. You may have thought, well, I decided to follow Jesus. You wouldn't have if the Holy Spirit had not worked in your heart. Um, those of you, you, you really, I want to grow in holiness. I want to, God's working on these things. Can't do it without the Holy Spirit. I don't care how uh, self-controlled you are. I don't care how much uh, uh, self-discipline you have. Self-discipline cannot bring about spiritual growth and spiritual things. Holy Spirit does that. So the Holy Spirit does all of these different things. But one of the big things, and this is what we've been talking about last week in this, is that the Holy Spirit is given to us is given to you, n not, just, not just me as pastor, for service, which he calls each one of us to do. You think, oh, well, Pastor Jennifer is the one who serves the church. The Bible is so clear. If you are a Christian this morning, God has called you into service within the church and without, outside the church as well. And we got to have the Holy Spirit's help. So this is what we've been looking at. Um, and we've been talking about ordinary people, extraordinary God. So God calls ordinary people. God calls normal people. God calls <laughs> abnormal people. <laughs> um, God calls each one of us. I, I'm sorry to say that, but you know what I mean. It's true. It's true. Uh, and the the... The key, the clue, the, the secret power, if you will, is not us and it's not our ability. It is our extraordinary God. So we looked at that last week, Philip and Stephen, who were used in just incredible ways, started out serving and then God used them in miracles and, and um, uh, all sorts of things. Then I told you we were going to look at Peter and John this morning. And I want us to uh, end, I want us to start where we ended last week. Um, so we're, we're going to go back in time about, well, anyhow, we're going to go back in time just a little bit. And this, this story, I say story, but you know it's true. This episode, this event is found in Acts 3 and, f three and 4. <laughs> okay, it's in Acts 3 and 4. And it's interesting because this miracle, what happens here, uh, gets more Bible space than what and no is the believers were going daily to the temple court, right? Does that make sense? Can, can we assume that from this verse? Yeah? They continued to meet together every day in the temple courts. So the other believers, but also Peter and John, are going up every day 
to the temple. That was the place where they would gather to pray. You say, how, what does that have to do? It has a lot to do because now we see what happens next um, as we look at this. So let me ask you, they're going daily for prayer and fellowship. The lame man is being, t- is being taken to the temple how often? How often? Daily. Okay, so the lame man's being taken daily as well. So we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, but I want us to see something this morning. So Peter and John are going daily. The lame man is being taken daily. So does it make sense to say that Peter and John have walked by this lame man before? Yes or no? For sure. For sure. Peter and John have walked by him before. Is it possible that this lame man has asked for coins before from Peter and John? What do you think? Very likely. And we already know there's a habit and a pattern, right? Jesus taught his disciples to to go and give to the poor. That's what Jesus did, and they would have continued that. Um, Is it possible that Peter and John had given money to this beggar before? Is it possible? I think it's likely. It's likely. We have this setup, if you will, um, of something that's happening every day. But this day is different. He asks for money, which he does every time. They're walking by, which they do every time. And all of a sudden, Peter and John looked at him intently. They've never looked at him intently before. The Bible doesn't tell us that the Holy Spirit was working. But what we know is the Holy Spirit was working. Peter and John are full of the Holy Spirit. And this time they walk by and it is an intent gaze. There's something going on. So ordinary people, extraordinary God. On this day, the Holy Spirit has a plan. At this time, the Holy Spirit wants to do something. At this moment, the Holy Spirit's power is going to be extended and is going to go through the disciples to meet a need of a man. And this is the way the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit works this way. I want us to to see this. So what happens next? What happens next is, here we go, here we go. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand, helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. We don't have time to go into it, but uh, who's writing Acts? Uh, The earthly author? It's Luke, and Luke was a doctor. So if we could read Greek, we would find out that Luke uses very medical terms to talk about the man's ankles. They're strengthened. They weren't before, and then they're strengthened. And then he he has the ability to walk. I think it's kind of great that the, the book that has... So many miracles in it uh, is written by Luke, the doctor. That should encourage us. And so they were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, began to walk. Walking's not good enough when you're over 40 years old and you've never walked, as we find out later. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. He'd never been able to go into the temple before. And then all the people saw him walking, heard him praising God. And when they realized he was a lame beggar that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. Okay, so they'd seen him a lot before too. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. So Peter says, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have, I'll give you. What does Peter have? Does Peter, does Peter have the ability to heal someone? No, Peter does not have the ability to heal someone. Do you have the ability to heal someone? No. Do you have the ability to save someone? No. Do you have the ability to work a miracle? No. I'm so pitiful, I can't do any of these things. You're in good company with Peter and John. Neither do they have those abilities. What you do have is the promise and the power of the Holy Spirit in times of need. So when you look at yourself and when I look at myself and I think I'm nobody, 
great, I'm nobody also. I can't, great, I can't either. You're an ordinary person, but you're linked to an extraordinary God. You're facing mountains that you cannot climb, but your God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is the way maker. You're going through a wilderness where there is no water and there is no bread. But Jesus is the bread of life and he is the water. And you're an, extra you're an ordinary person linked with an extraordinary God. This is what, I, we could look just at this as something that happened long, long ago, but I want us to see this in light of today and in light of the needs today in light of things that, that, um, that, that are going on today, the Holy Spirit, who is extraordinary, wants to work through ordinary people. Jesus said, you're going to do the works that I do through the same power with which I did them. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you are freaking out right now internally. You're sitting here with a smile on your face, but inside you're thinking, is, is Pastor Jen saying, I need to walk down Nathan Road and pray for beggars and, and say, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. I am not saying that at all. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is this. As the Holy Spirit works in you and lives in you and works through you, he's going to bring you to people who need to encounter God. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to be. You can't heal anybody. You can't. Only God can do that, and God's extraordinary. Let me give you an example of this. Uh, yesterday, I was coming back. I'd spent the afternoon with Andrew, and then Christine came in, and um, I was coming, uh, where was I? I was at Kennedy Town, way over there, end of the, end of the, uh, the island line at Kennedy Town. And um, I don't know how big, I don't know how many people can fit on, a, on, a, a, on one MTR train. I think this is one of the long MTR trains. Those of you who are engineers can figure out, but I figure several hundred people, right? At least, several hundred people. So I'm in Kennedy Town, and I'm coming back home, and there are a whole bunch of people there, and we all get on the train. Um, it was because it was right around uh, after six, so the crowd, they were, they were quite, uh, there were quite a lot of people. And there were seats here and there, and a woman sat down and uh, was seated, and I walked on, uh, then I walked on the same car, and then uh, I sat down. I could, there were other open places, plenty of other open places. Usually, when we sit on the train, we don't want to sit next to someone, right? Don't you? Am I right, Maui? That's right. You want to go for an open space, right? You don't want to sit down right next to someone, right? Let me go sit over. Let me sit next to the, to the glass, right? Then I only have one person on one side. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I do that? I didn't. I got on the train, and I sat down right next to this woman, and there was a, the, the bar between us. So we're sitting there waiting, and I confess, I want to be open with you, I missed it the first time. I missed it the first time because she was sitting there. She was kind of fiddling around with things, and then she reached in her bag, and her elbow was way over in my side, and oh, I just I, that just drives me crazy, you know, like my space. And so I kind of, I'm so sorry. This is me. I'm an ordinary person. <laughs> I'm an ordinary person. And she got out something, and she got some tissue, and I thought, oh, no, she's got a cold. <laughs> I, 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 I told you I'm an ordinary person, right? And then so I kind of, <coughs> you know, and then I sat there. And as I sat there, I suddenly realized something's wrong. Something's wrong. I want to tell you, I'm not that spiritual, and I'm not that smart. She was holding something. Uh, Raphael would know what it was. It was some sort of, t like, two medical, maybe orthopedic devices or something like that. And I think she, mu she must have maybe even come in from the hospital. And she was holding them, trying to hold her bag. And then she wiped her eyes, and I realized she was in great distress, and she was grieving. She was grieving. And she was trying not to cry. And I felt like such a jerk. I did. I felt like such a jerk because I'd been like, <coughs> you know. 
And so I looked, and I didn't want to embarrass her. A and I'm saying this, I truly am saying this not to praise me, because I have very little praise in this, because like I said, I was irritated. Um, and she'd gotten, it was, uh, it was obviously, it was a uh, toilet paper. It was toilet paper that she pulled, and she was kind of wiping, and she was wiping her eyes, and she was very quiet. She had a mask on, and I realized something's wrong, and I knew something. It, it was the Holy Spirit. It's a little bit like Peter and John. They looked at him intently, and I realized something was really wrong, and her heart was just broken, and I realized she's doing all she can not to cry on the MTR. And so I, I looked at her. Other people started sitting down, and um, so I leaned over, and at first I thought she was Filipina. I, I thought she was at first. Um, and so I leaned over, and I said, are, are you Filipina? And she looked at me, and she she did it. And I thought, is she is she maybe she's deaf? And so I didn't you know didn't know that. And so I so I just sat there quietly, and then she really began crying. And so I thought, Lord, what can I do? Because I thought, well, maybe she's deaf. So I just reached in my purse. So I started praying. I reached in my purse and I got out tissue, um, uh, and I got out the bag. And I, I thought, I don't want to embarrass her, but I, I hand just handed it to her. And she immediately took it and just started, just really started crying. And I didn't know what to do, so I kind of hid my purse. And I just started, you know, you got to be careful. In, you got to be careful, right? Some weirdo trying to touch another person, right? People, ah, you know. You, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> you, you know what I mean. And I thought, well, Lord. But I, and so I just started, I just, I just started patting her arm. I just started patting her arm. And then I thought, okay, she's not Filipina, so I leaned over in Chinese, in Putonghua, I said, um, I, and then I said something to her, and she looked at me, and in, in Mandarin, she said, um, in Mandarin, she said, I'm a, chi I'm a Chinese person, I don't speak English. <laughs> and I said, I'm speaking Mandarin. <laughs> but, you know, her, her, and so I, and I just said, are, are you okay? And she, she replied, almost nothing, but she was, she was really, she was just grieving. So, I don't know what had happened. Had somebody just passed away? Had something, it was obviously breaking her heart, so she was sitting there. And so all I could do was just say, I'm praying for you. Are you okay? God loves you. Are you okay? And I just, just patted her arm. And, and I want to share that with you and I because think with me of the odds. What are the odds that I would get on that train and sit next to a person like that who's grieving and who needs help. The, the odds are great. But the thing is, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I'm not boasting. I'm not boasting. But I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And do you know what the Holy Spirit wants to do in this world, brothers and sisters? The Holy Spirit wants to help people. The Holy Spirit wants to meet people's needs. The Holy Spirit wants to heal broken hearts. The Holy Spirit wants people who don't know about a loving God to know there's a loving God. And the Holy Spirit is going to do that through people. Through people. Anil said, these Muslims that are having dreams and this and that. Do you think God's just working on his own and so they're having dreams and they're seeing Jesus? No. No. There are people praying for Muslims around the world. Around the world. And God, who is extraordinary, wants to work through you. Very ordinary. Just as he did me yesterday. And I'm telling you this not to say, oh, Pastor Jan, you're such a good pastor. No, I'm not. I try to be, but sometimes I'm a jerk, just as you are. But what I want you to see is this. God loved her enough that he sat me next to her on the MTR so that she could know somebody cares, she's not alone, and give comfort. And then what did I do? Then we got as far as Admiralty, and she went on ahead of me. And she got on the East Rail Line, so she was, uh, I think she must have been going back to China. And I was behind her, but I couldn't get up close enough to her, and there was a huge crowd. And she got on the train, and I didn't make it on the train. But here's the thing. 
She didn't even know I was behind her. She turned around and she stood there. She was standing and she saw me and she was just crying and she just kept her eyes locked on me and I just waved. I just waved as she went off and then I prayed for her the rest of the way home. I'm ordinary and so are you, but our God is extraordinary. Peter and John were ordinary, but their God was extraordinary. And just as that lame person at that moment was a moment where God brought his ordinary people to meet a need, God wants to do that in you. And God wants to do that in me and through us, every one of us, every one of us. Um, and as we, as, and, and like I said, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to freak you out. I've got to go pray for people who are lame. Well, maybe, maybe, but maybe God wants you to see somebody on the MTR. Maybe God wants you to pray for someone. Maybe God wants you to show love and to show care. God is the one who orchestrates and organizes this. And so we see this in part one, that the Holy Spirit brings it together at just the right time as they're going about their daily business. And, and what I want to say to us this morning is this. If you will let the Holy Spirit fill you and pay attention, he is going to open your eyes to circumstances that you've never seen before. He's going to help you to see people that you've never paid attention to before. He's going to bring you to someone who really has a need, and you didn't even know they had a need. You hadn't even paid attention to it before, because that's what he does. So what happens next? Um, so, uh, um, uh, okay, I'm skipping, I'm skipping part of it, but what happens next is that Peter, I think, did I skip it? I did. Uh, if you keep on reading the story, a crowd gathers, of course, of course, and Peter starts preaching. And he starts saying, oh, you're, don't be surprised by this. Don't stare at, a, at us as though we had made this man walk, verse 12, by our own power or godliness. I don't have that recorded. Nope, I don't have it recorded. If you're looking at us, we didn't do this by our own power or godliness. And here's the thing, brothers and sisters, we do nothing by our own power or godliness, right? We do nothing, nothing. Some of you are so hung up, I don't have power. I'm not godly enough. Get together with God. Peter says very clearly, it's not my power. It's not my godliness. It was faith in the name of Jesus Christ that did this. And the crowd starts listening and they start responding. And then here's the next part. Okay, here's part two. Something bad happens. Okay, while Peter and John were speaking to the people, spoiler alert, they were confronted by the priests and they were disturbed. Peter and John are preaching. They arrest them and then put them in jail until morning. But then 5,000 believe. Okay, stop at verse 3 just a minute. This is the end of part 1. We're getting ready for part 2 of this story. Still the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you go through the book of Acts, guess what? Four times in the book... Did I write it down? Four, ti four times? Let me make sure. Three times. Okay, sorry, three times. Three other times, God opens prison doors. Did you know that? Three other times in the book of Acts, God opens prison doors. In fact, the very next time they're arrested, an angel goes and he opens the prison door and says, go out and preach. Then Peter is put in prison. And what happens? An angel opens the door and he gets out of prison. Uh, Paul and Silas are in Philippi, right? And God sends an earthquake and everything. And the prison doors are open. Spoiler alert, God does not open the prison doors this time because he's going to do something else. Okay, ready for part two of this story? There's the interlude, part two. Okay, the next day, the council, um, here's the work of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, still. Uh, the next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met, um, hang on, I've lost my place, met in Jerusalem. So they all meet there. Take a quick look at these names. Look at verse 6. Do you know what? These are the people who condemned Jesus to death. Eh. These are the people. This, this is the gang. This is the crowd that said, put Jesus to death. So now Peter and John are standing in front of them. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Okay. Ready for part two? Here is the work of the Holy Spirit. Then Peter, okay, here's part two. 
filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? You want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel, he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Now look with me at this very quickly. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember the first time Peter was, was filled with the Holy Spirit? What happened? What happened? First time. He spoke in other tongues, right? He spoke in other tongues. They were praising God. And this was the filling of the Holy Spirit, the baptizing of the Holy Spirit. So let me ask you right here. Does Peter suddenly start speaking in other tongues in front of this gang? Does he? No. No, nevertheless, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit is working, when it's working, there will not be an outer supernatural manifestation. There may not be, um, very possibly, very probably, there will not be uh, tongues or this or that. Nevertheless, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit. Why does God, could he do that by himself? He cannot do that by himself. Only God can fill us with the Holy Spirit. And so Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, suddenly starts speaking. Why does God fill him with the Holy Spirit at this point? Why? Because he needs it. <laughs> because he needs it. Peter and John are standing in front of the enemy, okay? The enemy is questioning them. These people have the power to sentence them to death, although they would have to go through a trial, Okay, so these people have great power over Peter and John. Here's something else. These people are the most educated people in the land. Let me ask you something. Ah, some of you are really educated. Some of you are really smart. Have you ever been around someone who's super educated and super smart and they make you feel like you're an idiot? Yeah? Don't you hate being around people like that? Anyway, I, no, nobody likes that very much. So, by the way, so if you're really smart and really educated, just be nice, okay? Be nice. So they're standing in front of people who are really, really educated, and they're questioning them. And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, starts talking and starts defending and starts pointing to God. Here's part two of the work of the Holy Spirit you and I sometimes are in circumstances, in situations where in our own ability and in our own power, we cannot handle what's going on, right? We can't do something about it. We don't know how to deal with it. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to forgive. We don't know which way to go. We don't know what decision to make. Here we are stuck with what we are. And this is for all of us. So here we are. And it is at times like this, brothers and sisters, that we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, gives this wonderful defense that any lawyer would be jealous of. Any lawyer would be jealous of this. And then what happens next? Oh, let me read this for you. Uh, let me go back. Let me read for you. Mark 13, 11. Look at what it says. Jesus said to his disciples, when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. On the contrary, just say what God tells you at the time, for it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. This is a wonderful verse, brothers and sisters. This is a wonderful verse for you. This is a wonderful promise from God. Because all of us, all of us, we get in situations, suddenly we think, oh God, what, what am I going to do? We're faced with somebody who's desperate. We're faced... Uh, we're, I, I've told you the story before about my, my sister whose car broke down and she went into the store and the man said, um, well, I'm going to go home and commit suicide tonight because he had nothing to live for. What do you say when you're faced with somebody like that? Oh, no, don't commit suicide. People love you. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. Oh, no, you've got something to live for. Maybe he doesn't. 
And, and you may think, well, you're being kind of dramatic. All of us face situations like this. It may be something in ourselves or it may be something outside of us with other people. But all of us face times and circumstances, maybe in your own family, maybe with a spouse, uh, maybe with a child, maybe in your work. It, it may be in something else. And you think, oh, God, it's so much bigger than you. It's so much greater than your ability. What are you going to do? How are you going to handle it? What are you going to say? That is when you and I need the filling of the Holy Spirit at that moment, at that time of need, because He is able, He is willing, He is powerful, and He is here to work on behalf of God's children. We must have the help of the Holy Spirit. We must have the filling of the Holy Spirit. We must have the power of the Holy Spirit. If not, you and I are on our own against a tough, hard, wicked world. We must have the power of the Holy Spirit. We must be desperate for the Holy Spirit. We must long for and ask for and wait upon God to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. And we can count on in those time of need, in that time of need, rather than saying, what am I going to do? In that time of need, at that moment, the Holy Spirit will fill you and what you need at that time and the words that are needed at that time that are so far beyond you and so far beyond me, but they're not beyond your extraordinary God. And Peter speaks out, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now here's this beautiful part. You know this part, don't you? The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary, uneducated men with no special training in the scriptures. Here you go, got it? They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. May I ask you something this morning? I'm going to put you on the spot. When you are around people, especially in times of need, would people look at you and recognize that you have been with Jesus? You have been with Jesus. I think about Peter here. We still got to get to part three, but it'll be fast. Here's Peter a short time before. Remember him in the go that night around the campfire? the fire when they were trying to stay warm and they said you were with him you were one of them right and Peter says no 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 I wasn't with him I wasn't with Jesus I was no no I don't know the man three times and the last time he swears right he he curses and he says no and now a short time later as he is filled with the Holy Spirit he needs say nothing but it is evident that he has been with Jesus. Have you been with Jesus? If you have not, brothers and sisters, you will be quite powerless to help in times of need. But they recognized They've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. I don't know if that woman yesterday on the MTR recognized that I'd been with Jesus because she didn't really respond when I said to her, Jesus loves you. God cares about you. She just, she had her head down. All I know is what are the odds of course, God had me sit there for her. Of course. That's what the Holy Spirit does. 
That's what the Holy Spirit does. They warn them again, and then they turn them loose. And then here's part three very quickly. I want us to see it. This is part three for all of you who are still unconvinced that God wants to use you in this same way. I know that. I see it on your faces. Some of you are thinking, well, yeah, maybe, Pastor Jane, you could sit beside. But, but by the way, if you're a man, please don't pat a woman on the, <laughs> on the arm, <laughs> on, on the MTR. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Here we go. As soon as they were released, Peter and John went back to their own people. I love that. They went back to their own people, their fellowship, the other Christians, very quickly. And they reported what all the chief priests and elders had said. And when they heard, the, the, because they were really big threats, don't say anything else. You were going to do this. We're going to do this. And they say, okay, this is what the enemy said. And when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Uh, by the way, I want to encourage you in prayer. I think this was a loud prayer meeting. I do. I think this was a loud. Don't you think this was a loud prayer meeting? I'm pretty sure it was. They raised their voices together in prayer to God. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does when he fills you is he gives you boldness and confidence in prayer. That's, what, that's one of the things he does. That's what he wants to do because we need help in prayer, don't we? We really need help in prayer. They raise their voices. They begin to pray. Sovereign Lord, they, say, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And it's quite a long prayer, but I love that they start this way because they're talking to the big boss now, aren't they? It was the little boss that said, you better stop talking about Jesus. Now they talk to the big boss, the big boss who made the heavens and the earth. You made the heaven and the earth and the sea, everything in them. The prayer goes on, and now, now, Lord, consider their threats. You heard, you heard them, God. You heard what they said. And enable your servants to speak your message with complete boldness. That word boldness is used three times. It also means confidence, okay? While you stretch out your hand for healing, signs, and wonders to be performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So that should encourage you one more time. Who's going to stretch out his hand and do miracles? Who is it? Are you? You? Carolyn, are you going to do that? Are you going to put your hand on somebody and heal them? Carolyn says, no. <laughs> he says, Pastor Jen, is this a trick question? Not a trick question. No. Who stretches out his hand? in healing power. Jesus, Jesus, the one who defeated death and hell and took all our sins and bore our shame and bore our grief, Jesus. So they talk to God and they say, Jesus, you do your work. And what they say is, God, you do your part. God, help us to do our part. That's really the prayer, simply. Enable your servants to speak your message with complete boldness. That's what the Holy Spirit will do in you. He will. He will give you the confidence. Oh, <coughs> yeah, I, I want to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> the Holy Spirit through you will give you confidence. Not arrogance. Not ar arrogance. Confidence. Now, here we go. Last, last verse. You ready? We're right at the end. This is the conclusion of part three. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were, and Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that what it says? What does it say? What does it say, Keith? And they were all, everybody that was gathered, not just the apostles, all of the believers. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Part three, the end. Everybody was filled with the Holy Spirit. Everybody spoke boldly. Everybody went out and, and said with confidence, Jesus is risen from the dead and he has the power to heal. Everybody, not just the disciples, everybody. Ordinary people, ordinary people, extraordinary God. The end. <laughs> Let's close in prayer. And I'm going to ask you to pray for something. 
uh, if it is in your heart to pray. And I want to challenge you. Would you be willing to ask the Lord and to offer to the Lord yourself this week to fill you with his Holy Spirit and say, God, I am so ordinary. I'm an ordinary person, but you're an extraordinary God. But here I am. Would you fill me with your Holy Spirit? And according to your plan, would you work through me in, in the days ahead? I'm not even going to say this week, because some of you are going to get under a whole bunch of pressure. You're going to think, I've got seven days and God has to do something great. In the days ahead. Let me just say it that way. Shall we do that together? Shall we do that together? Don't you think God wants to? I think God wants to. I know God wants to. That's why this miracle gets so much attention right here at the, at the, in the early chapters, the first recorded miracle. There were others, but this is the first recorded one. And you know what? It's the Holy Spirit beginning, middle, end, working through ordinary people. So, Lord, here we are this morning, lighthouse gathered in your name. You just, you pray with me. You pray with me. Uh, here we are, Lord. We are all ordinary people. We are super ordinary people, Lord. Um, but Lord, here we are. And we ask that you would uh, fill us with your power. Lord, enable us. Uh, give us the ability. Give us the power to speak your word, to, to show you confidently and boldly, we pray this week. God, we don't even want to tell you. How, we don't even know how you're going to do it. We don't even know what circumstances you, uh, to which you're going to bring us. But Lord, here we are. Here we are, ordinary people. But we look to you because you are an extraordinary God. And we just say, here we are. Here we are. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And do your work through us, we pray. Do your work in us, we pray. Do what you plan to do as we make ourselves available and tell you that we are willing for you to work through us and in us, ordinary people. But, oh, God, you are so extraordinary. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. 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 So, Anil, you're ordinary, but extraordinary God. We're going to hear good reports. We're going to hear great things. Amen. <laughs>